In this topic, we are going to discuss about the various different roles that an expatriate takes in a subsidiary position. So when an expatriate is sent on an international assignment from the parent country to the host country and manage the subsidiary operations in a particular position, he actually is not just fulfilling that position of, for example, the head of operations or head of marketing or whatever position he is uh, fulfilling, but he is actually uh, filling up uh, a number of roles in the organization. So let's take a look at these roles. In this diagram, you can see that there are six roles which are considered to be that of an expatriate. So in this diagram, you can see that uh, starting from the top, the expatriate is an agent of direct control. Uh, he or she is an agent of socializing. Uh, they work as network builders. Uh, then they are used for transfer of competence and knowledge. They uh, play the role of boundary spanners and also serve as a language node. Okay, now let's take a look at what all these six terms they mean and what the expatriate is supposed to do when he is playing the role of each of these persons as boundary spanner or network builder or direct control or socializer. All right, so number one, uh, expatriate as agent of direct control plays the role of controlling the organization, controlling the subsidiary directly uh, by, uh, from the headquarters. So uh, sending an expatriate uh, from the parent organization, parent country to the subsidiary uh, usually has an objective of direct control over the subsidiary management uh, in the form of bureaucratic control so that people are bound by the rules and procedures of the organization and uh, they are uh, supposed to comply to those rules and procedures through direct supervision by the people coming from parent uh, organization, parent country. Uh, these uh, people who come for direct control uh, um, the author of this model has termed them as beers. So they are beers who have this uh, very much uh, bureaucratic personality, strong personality, and they do not let you, uh, uh, ha let you any freedom, and you are supposed to be abiding by the rules of the multinational. And this basically reflects an ethnocentric approach. You would remember from previous topics, that ethnocentric approach is an approach which favors the um, uh, which favors the ethnicity of the multinational headquarters. So it means that uh, people who are sent for this particular reason for direct control, they are actually following the ethnocentric approach that they are not ready to hand over the control of the subsidiary to uh, uh, people from the host country uh, because they want direct control and supervision over them. Uh, so that is, um, that comes from a ethnocentric approach. Then expatriates, they are also considered to be agents of socializing uh, between the host country cultures and the parent country cultures. Uh, they are considered to be uh, transfers of shared values and beliefs. And accordingly, in this model, they are termed as the bumblebees. Uh, you know that bees, they, uh, they fly from one flower to the other. And in that process, they, um, uh, they carry from one place to the other. They carry pollen. They carry various different, uh, uh, you know, um, they also carry germs and um, they are the ones which are responsible for transfer of, uh, you know, um, of, of different types of things from one place to the other. So bumblebees are, uh, that is the name which is given to these expatriates that they carry things 
from the parent country to the host country and uh, they uh, because of that uh, transfer of various things from one place to the other there is a an amalgamation of culture there is a mixing of values and beliefs and that is supposed to be uh, a a a positive process uh, but uh, this is something which is idealistic uh in actual practical uh, situation and evidences we see that there is limited empirical evidence of effectiveness so um the expatriates usually do not serve as the agents of socializing rather if they go and uh, uh, they try to um uh, they try to inculcate the values and beliefs of the uh, of the parent country in the host country without knowing what is going to be the reaction of people in the host country that usually is actually backfires and people are offended when they are required to behave in a particular way which is not conversant and familiar with their own culture so uh, usually uh, the successful strategy is that of adopting the culture in which you are going rather than uh, implementing the culture where you are coming from all right so the third role which is considered to be that of an expatriate is a, a role of network builder and for this uh, the author has termed uh, the expatriates as spiders so you know that spiders they build webs so uh similarly in organizations and multinational organizations uh webs of knowledge and resources need to be built up so these expatriate uh, human resource uh, people they are considered to be those who will build these webs of knowledge of learning of resources and of that particular organization so that is considered to be uh develop uh, a process of developing social capital uh that is also uh, not just for learning this is for making linkages informal linkages uh for control and communication so people from the foreign country they come and work in the host country so that they can build these networks they can socialize for example with government officials or they can socialize with competitors they can socialize with people who are influencing the success of the organization in that particular country so they are the network builders of the organization then the expatriate uh, managers they also uh, play the role of boundary spanners boundary spanning refers to activities such as gathering information that bridge inter internal and external organizational context so boundary spanning is that you you span the boundary of your organization and you gather information outside and inside that boundary and try to you know fix the gap between the internal and external context then expatriate manager also serve as ma language nodes for example if you go from america to china and a person stays in china for a year he will learn the chinese language and when he comes back he will know the chinese language and may be able to teach that chinese chinese language to uh, other people in in the organization or uh, if not uh, teaching uh, is an important role the person can actually you know then later on communicate with other people in china competitors or uh, clients or um, suppliers and by, by sitting in the home country so they serve as language nodes as well and finally the expatriate serves the role of transfer of competence and knowledge and this is something which we have uh, several time discussed that skills and abilities uh, and the common work practices they need to be transferred uh, from the headquarters to the subsidiary and that is important for developing the organizational culture and it is also important for sharing different perspectives and viewpoints uh, so knowledge transfer usi waqt hota hai jab aap diversity ko uh, bhi include karte hain so uh, because when you look at things from different perspectives from different viewpoints then your uh, knowledge and your understanding about those particular concepts 
or that those phenomena that improves a lot and that this thing is something which further enhances the social capital of the organization so these are the six different various roles that an expatriate manager may be playing in uh, in in the organization when he goes for a foreign assignment from his home country to the host country